There's some interesting things to consider today, especially as we see the crypto and digital asset market just plummet. And over the last week or so, we've seen Bitcoin decrease by 10%. Now, of course, as we look at everything over a spectrum, we can just say that this isn't a big deal, especially if you look out for a year. But the question then is, why is this happening right now and what's going on behind the scenes? So first I wanna to bring to your attention, this is Dr. Martin Heisbeck. I think I said that right. Uh, head of research at Uphold. And he put out a tweet, first of all. I know everybody today is talking about German governments and they're talking about, of course, Mount Gox and they're talking about miners and everything else. So the question really is, what is it? And this kind of caught my attention because it says, look, Bitcoin's dipping. U.S. miners are now in the red. They have to continue selling all Bitcoin to make ends meet. Again, to sell all the Bitcoin to make ends meet. That's a pretty bold claim. And bold claims are going to require a lot of evidence. And he states this is the worst case scenario we described in March because of minor centralization, their actions in economic planning have outsized effect in the price of Bitcoin. What's more, all ETF buyers are now sitting in losses. Again, he says all ETF buyers are sitting in losses. Wait for them to capit capitulate. By late August, September, job losses will mount rapidly. The Fed will start cutting rates, blah, 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 AI dreams, so on and so forth. Markets are always right, and no Mount Gox in German sees Bitcoin had nothing to do with this decline. So I thought about that. I thought about that pretty hard. I thought to myself, well, if it's not Mount Gox and it's not German, the German government selling off their, their seized Bitcoin, what really was it? And he's saying that it's because of these Bitcoin miners. But it, and what he talks about is that it's a direct relation to and that Bitcoin miners will now have to sell because it goes, it goes below 60 so I'm thinking to myself, what the heck happened when it was 66, 67K and it's dropped below? Let's take a look. So the first thing you have to remember is, and this is a great point by uh, friend Andy here, and he says, the Bitcoin crash that people are losing their minds over is very subtle. And this is normal. Like if you take a look back in 2019, 2020, if you take a look back even farther than that, most of the years when it is the halving year, 2020 will be a halving year, 2024 will be a halving year, 2016 will be a halving year. You have these big pullbacks or some people call them corrections. And they might be 20%, they might be 30%. It's just how it is. And it's because we're in a volatile market, so don't flip out. I will remind you that just a year ago, Bitcoin was 25K. And now all of a sudden we went up to 73K and everybody's happy. And now we get the aftermath, which is what goes up fast will at some point retreat. And that's where we're at. So the question then is, well, you know, how bad is it? And again, if we take a look just over this time frame, it's not too bad. But the question then is, well, what about what he talked about in that tweet, which is all of the ETF holders are now out of profit, which he says right here. They're sitting in losses. Well, if we take a look at heyapollo.com, it's not really the case. And we can see that if we just take a trek back here, that roughly around January 10th, January 11th, somewhere around there, that's when we had the approval of the Bitcoin ETF. That was $46,000. And of course, they bought in and it dropped. And of course, I'm sure the people that are, have sold that to them, the Fidelities, the BlackRock said, that's ah, going to be okay. And it was. And it did just well. It went from 47, went to 50, went to 60, 68, 73. And of course, during that time, either people were buying or they were sitting on their, their unrealized profits. Now, at some point you're gonna sell. And I hate to break it to you, but people sell all the time, they take profits. I know that people on different social media platforms will say that never happens and you should diamond hands forever. That's just how it is. It depends on what you wanna do. And I can't give you financial advice, it's just, that's just how it's been for an eternity. So again, we can see here that <clears throat> they're not sitting in losses. If they kept buying, and dollar cost average, they'd still be okay. Now, right, of course, over here, we have more people in losses. Yeah, that is very true. But hopefully the, again, the Fidelities, the Black Rocks, different people in the ETFs that have, are selling them, they hopefully have educated their clients enough to say, look, this is very volatile. And if you will hold on for around four years or so, just give it a four year cycle, you're gonna be just fine. So for me, when he talks about they're all not in profit, that's not true. And then what about the minor flow? And of course he says, this is all about the Bitcoin miners. Not really. Now, if we take a look over here, this is Ben's website in the Cryptoverse, links in the description, you can check it out. This is the miner flow. And this goes to the different 
uh, centralized exchanges. You have Huobi, Bitstamp, Bitmex, Kraken, Bitrex, Bitfinex, Gemini, Gemini. It's everything you could ever want to think about as far as the flow of when these Bitcoin miners actually get these rewards, how much do they actually take from their wallet and stick them into the exchanges. Now, again, just because you're moving Bitcoin doesn't mean that you're actually selling Bitcoin. That's not how it works. I'm bit, but me personally, like I've always said, I'm not moving my Bitcoin just for giggles. I do it for a specific reason. Usually if it's going from my cold storage wallet to say Coinbase, it's not because I wanted to, it's because I got to sell. And that's where we're at right now. So if we kind of zoom in to a little bit, this is the net flow. So we're taking what's going into the wallets for the Bitcoin miners, what's going out of those wallets. And we have our net. Here's the inflow. Pretty good, right? Here's our outflow. So we take outflow minus inflow. We have our net flow. I want you to zoom in real quick on this position. First of March. Actually, what we're going to do is we're going to do a daily and get away from the, the monthly and just take here for the net flow. What do you see? Today wasn't that bad of a day. Yesterday was a was much, uh, much worse. And that's the net, again, in minus out. We can see that on some days there actually, there was more inflow of Bitcoin into the miners' wallets than there was outflow. I think you can make a case 14th of June, 12th of June, going back to 8th of June, was much worse for the outflow of miners actually selling. So I don't think that's what it really is. I think the market is irrational, and I think we come to the realization that people get a little bit uh, crazy. And this is one of the reasons. Mount Gox to begin repayments in July. And now we've taken a look at all the other reasons and everything contributes. We're not in a vacuum. But I think when we have something like this, the panic seller was like, oh, I got to get out of this because this is going to be a big dumpage. Now, if you've been in the market like we have, this is a nothing burger. This is a story that has been rehashed and told many a time. And even I laugh at this, but there is something to be said as far as the, the timeliness of it and what's happening. This is actually, that article was actually all written because of the rehabilitation trustee, Kobayashi attorney at law. And what he says here is this, notice regarding commencement of repayments in Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash. I've never seen it stated like this before. So this could be actually the real deal. The rehabilitation trustee has been preparing to make repayments in Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash under the rehab plan. Now that these preparations are in place, the rehab trustee will commence the repayments in Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash in due course to the crypto exchanges with which the rehab trustee, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care about that. This is what I care about. The repayments will be made from the beginning of July 2024. Let me say that again. Repayments made July 2024. That is part of the reason why everybody's flipping out. Are miners selling? Yes. Are ETF holders selling? Probably. Are people who are disguising their sales and saying, oh, it's those guys over there and they're dumping a bunch of it? Sure, why not? Really what it comes down to is this. There is more sellers than there are buyers and we see a decline. It's all about how you look at it. Do you take a look at this as an opportunity or do you take a look at this as this is the worst thing ever? I will remind everybody, since Bitcoin was at 73,000, the only thing I would hear is, boy, I cannot wait till it goes down because I'm gonna buy like crazy. Is that you? Let me know in the comments section. But it seems like when the rubber meets the road, people do not get up to the task at hand. But we will see. So what does this mean for the price today? Well, not a great day, <laughs> to be honest with you, as far as like your portfolio. You got 2.3 market cap as far as trillion. Bitcoin is going to go under 60,000. I'm pretty sure about that because I think we're going to see more panic selling moving forward. And it's already down almost 10% for seven days. But that's just Bitcoin. Now for all, so Ethereum is actually holding up pretty well, probably at the conception of the potential of the ETH ETF coming forward. BNB is doing pretty good, actually. Uh, XRP, wow, watch out. You're actually beating Bitcoin for the last seven days as far as like a decrease. Tuncoin is doing good. We talked about that yesterday. Dogecoin, the big losers, Avalanche down 14%. Ouchie, Bitcoin Cash 16%. That's big time because the uh, rehab plan and hopefully you notice that is is Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash, not just Bitcoin. They're going to pay people back in Bitcoin Cash as well. So you will suspect that they will probably get dumped on. Fetch AI doing awful. Just kidding. Up 26%. And of course, there's a couple of things going on with 
Fetch AI, Singularity, and Ocean Protocol as they merge together. That was delayed, but it looks like it's going to go through. So that's where I think things are going as far as AI and crypto. So that's what's happening right there. And I think we're going to see more of this, even though it's, you know, we can say it's a great opportunity and whatever else, people won't do it. This is what's going to happen. You're going to see a lot of people get negative. You're going to see somebody like Lurker668 say, hey, when in doubt, zoom out to see where we're going. So another pump and dump straight to zero. Got it. In that case, better sell it off now. And we're going to see a lot of those things. So just be aware, this is a natural occurrence, just like we saw in the other halving year of 2020, also in 2016. You're going to have pullbacks. You're going to have corrections. People will take profits. Do not believe them when they say they won't because they are lying to you right to your face. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. Then just to finish up a couple of interesting stories, just to take a look at where things are going, Tether. Tether announces a strategic transition to prioritize community-driven blockchain support. And what are they doing because of that? Well, they're going to stop using EOS and Algorand. Here's what we got. This is from the from Tether, right from the foundation. After thorough consideration, Tether will discontinue support for the EOS and Algorand implementation. Sorry, Beardy, we couldn't hold it up. Tether will stop minting USDT on EOS and Algorand starting today, June 24th. Tether will continue to redeem USDT on EOS and Algorand as usual for the next 12 months. If you want to see a reason as to why they're doing that, it's because nobody's using it. That's really what it comes down to. Algorand may be awesome and fantastic, but people aren't using it for Tether, apparently. And if they were, Tether would still be with them. And EOS is the same exact way. So if you own it, hey, uh, you know, maybe it'll work out. Maybe it won't. I personally own EOS, a little bit of it, because I didn't dump it enough in the last bull run, which I should have. And I have a little algo as well, but we'll see how they all work out. But it's not looking too good for them as far as Tether. We'll see how it works. And also, one of the different products that I talked about yesterday that uh, is claiming some notoriety, negative I might add, is Ton. Ton ecosystem flooded with phishing attacks. I'm not going to go into this uh, into detail, but uh, this is inevitable. If you've been on X, you've been on Twitter, you've been on YouTube, take a look at the comments section. I try to clean those up with a program that I use. I have a team that actually cleans out the spam as much as possible. I can't collect, get them all, but you're going to see a lot of phishing attacks. Like, hey, if you like this type of uh, content, uh, share some more with us over here and then actually download this wallet. And then hey, what kind of information do you need? Well, send us your email and blah, blah, blah. This is the same type of thing. So it was prevalent in most most of the social media platforms. It wasn't as bad, but now the ton is really catching fire, especially with their dApps and apps and all the things that they're doing over there. You better believe that there is a lot of phishing attacks going on. So just be careful. And speaking of which, some of the different apps that are going crazy, Hamster Combat. We talked about this. I'm not going to go too much in detail, but uh, Hamster Combat is just a juggernaut. Watch yesterday's video. I talked about it. But uh, it is a tap tap game on uh, Telegram. They're going to have an airdrop. It's going to be free and it's taken over the world. And this was a pretty good. It was actually a sad and it was a sad article. If you, and I'll just tell you why about it states hamster crypto craze has taken Iran. It highlights economic malaise ahead of a presidential election. Here's what it is. This is from Amir uh, Rashidi, the director of digital rights and security at the Mian Group, expert on Iran. He says it's a sign of being desperate. And what he's talking about is all these people who are walking around in Iran and uh, parts of the Middle East just tapping on their phones because hopefully they can get an airdrop. And why is it desperate? It's because they're trying to hang on to anything. You got a tiny hope that someday this might actually be valuable. Those able to divest from holdings in Iran's beleaguered currency, the real, real, I think, that purchased property, art, vehicles, precious metals, and hard assets. The reason why they did that is because there was the collapse of the real or the actual currency, and also the collapse of Tehran's 2015 nuclear deal with world powers. So at the time of the deal, the, and this is what's what's sad, and this could happen anywhere. It could even happen here. As you know, all fiat currency eventually goes to zero. At the time of the deal, the exchange rate was 32,000 reals to a one US dollar. Today, it's 580,000 reals to the dollar. Imagine if you're trying to save. Save up for whatever else. Save for a rainy day. Save for your kid's tuition. Save for your medical procedures. Whatever it is. 
and you had 32,000 reals for a dollar, now it's 508,000, you're broke. You're broken in the end, it's, it just becomes worthless. So no wonder people are putting their harder money into assets that actually at least stay stagnant and hopefully will appreciate, such as property art vehicles and Bitcoin. Many have found the value of their bank accounts, retirement funds, and their holdings gouged. Meanwhile, this is even sadder, prices of fruits and vegetables jumped 50% since last year, while the price of meat is driven 70%. How can you how can you live like that? You can't. And then you have to turn to these crazy games and hopefully you get an airdrop so you can feed your family. Unbelievable. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. And uh, lastly, if uh, and we've been talking about this a lot. If you're a big fan of eliminating the middleman, uh, there's a, a project that we've been talking about quite a bit, actually. And we did a deep dive over on Dan Degen. Uh, it's called Minutes Network, and it's in conjunction with World Mobile Token. They just landed uh, their first government contract, and uh, I think they made that official today. I, I don't want to say who it is, but essentially what it is is it allows Minutes Network to work with the Verizon, the T-Mobiles, the big network carriers, and they can eliminate the middlemen, uh, which would be the, uh, the termination model or the transition call people, and they're going to actually use blockchain technology to do it. It's a it's not complex, but I explained it pretty simply in this video. I linked in the description, but just so you know, uh, they're going live tomorrow and they're going to be able to do their uh, their first TGE or token generation event. So uh, if you want to get involved in that, it's available to you. And I asked um, the head of marketing and uh, he told me that, yes, U.S. investors are allowed into this through the KYC process. So. I've already gotten my allocation. I'm actually, I'll be buying in. And just want to tell you that if I don't talk about it on this channel, it means I don't own it. If I talk about it, I own it. And I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. And that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for this one. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you. And I'll see you on the next one.